Oh, hi. My name is Brad, and I'd like to demonstrate for you today the technology behind eStore's Electrical Energy Storage Unit, or ESU. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually build and test a working prototype for you today. And what I'd like to stress throughout this process is the simplicity of it all. I am, after all, a non-scientist. I'm a construction worker. So if I can figure it out, I'm sure that this is going to become a reality. All right, the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about some of the technical difficulties behind eStore's technology. Now, the eSU is based on a simple capacitor, okay? So what you've got is, you've got one conductive plate over here, and over here, you've got another conductive plate. Now, sandwiched in between these two plates is your dielectric, in this case, the barium titanate. Now, what you do is, all right, is you add an electric charge to this plate, okay? And what that does is it excites the electrons in this plate, creating an electric field, okay? And what your dielectric in here does is it polarizes, thereby amplifying the electric charge to the maximum amount of energy density possible, okay? That's what it does, all right? So the problem is, all right, you're wondering what the problem is. The problem. The problem is, eventually, your dielectric becomes completely polarized, totally polarized, okay? So that limits the amount, the total amount of electrical energy you're able to store in this system to far less than eStore is claiming. The name of this problem is called dielectric saturation, okay? That's the main problem, dielectric saturation, okay? Now, I have come up with a simple solution to this problem that I will now demonstrate for you over here on my workbench. All right, take a look. Okay, it all starts with the dielectric. The dielectric is the most important part, right? I was able to go on eBay the other day, bought myself some barium titanate. wasn't very hard, wasn't very expensive. Here it is, it's pretty good. First thing you gotta do, it's gotta be purified. Very important step. Okay, so we'll take some of our barium titanate, we'll put it in here. Very simple process. Purification. There it is. Done. Perfectly purified barium titanate. Then, it has to be polarized. Another real simple process. We'll take it in the microwave. Right there. Done. That's it. Perfectly purified, polarized, barium titanate, your dielectric, very important. Take one conductive plate, here it is, here nice and solid. You take your uh, your dielectric, sprinkle it on there, sandwich in between, there it is. Take your other plate, your other conductive plate, stick it on top, there it is. Good. Hook it up, make a, cir make a circuit, and there we are. Now, this is where we run into our problem. That darn dielectric saturation. What are you gonna do about it, you know? It's a problem, I have to admit. But you know what? I was at work the other day, and I was at lunch, and it hit me. The solution came to me. You know what I had for lunch? A peanut butter sandwich. I figured, what the hell? I might as well give it a try peanut butter sandwich it is. So what I decided to do is I decided to change my plates from these conductive plates to Wonder Bread. You always wondered why they call it Wonder Bread, right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wonderful stuff. All right, so what we'll do is we'll take the Wonder Bread. Those are our new plates. We'll take peanut butter. This is the secret ingredient to our dielectric, peanut butter. This is creamy peanut butter. Now that's important. Make sure it's creamy peanut butter because the chunks in the chunky peanut butter that interferes with the you know the electron flow and you don't get these much the, the uh, you know the energy density and stuff. So it's important that it's smooth. All right. You take your peanut butter, you spread it on your plates. Spread it on the plates just like so. All right. Done. Take a little bit of your barium titanate. You know for a little good measure. Can't hurt. Throw it on there, sprinkle it on there, put it together. There you go. A perfect, fully functional ESU that'll drive your car for 250 miles 
on a five minute charge. Let's try it out. First thing you gotta do is charge this baby up. All you gotta do is plug it into a simple wall outlet. Simple, five minutes. Here we go, right in here. Done, let's let that baby charge up. Let's get ready for our demonstration. Now, I've completely removed the internal combustion engine from the inside of this mint 1988 Mercury Cougar. And I've hooked up the drivetrain to a circuit accessed by this antenna. So all we gotta do is hook up our ESU to this antenna and we're good to go. All right, this thing should be uh, about fully charged by now, so why don't we unplug it from the wall and give this bad boy a try. Hi, Richard. It's Richard Weir. Yeah. No, no. No, your, your purple underwear are in the, um, the middle drawer. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll see you later on tonight. Okay, bye. All right. Uh, let's unplug this bad boy. Give it a try. All right, let's see if it works. I hook up the issue right here on the antenna. And let's check it out. It works. I finally invent something that really works. Easy. Fully functional. Oh, I, uh, I added the sound of the uh, internal combustion engine just for the benefit of all the blind people. But it works. It obviously works. And if you don't believe it works, you can eat it.